Welcome to Hollywood vs. Reality, episode 9. This week, we're doing things a little differently, and instead of looking at how photos are edited on Instagram, we're looking at the behind the scenes of real time beauty editing software. This is a big topic, so this episode, I'm focusing on Hollywood skin retouching, aka beauty work. Before we begin, a disclaimer, as always, that I'm not targeting or trying to harm anyone's brand, and the video is simply meant to be informative. So in Instagram vs Reality episode 5, I gave a little teaser as to how faces could be edited in videos and you all wanted more. A lot of the time, the biggest giveaway to an influencer's Photoshop edit on Instagram are their live stories or videos, which are much harder to edit consistently. That is, until now. Well, not really now, but the technology to live video edit has been around since 2002, with one of the very first visual effect companies, Lola Visual Effects, setting up shop in 2004. These guys specialize in a niche type of VFX called beauty work, aka anti-aging, and they're just one of the many consultants in Hollywood. The need to retouch comes as a direct result of high definition cameras, where the days of years past, actors such as Marlene Dietrich could get away with the DIY facelift of using tape and pins to pull her skin backwards. The lower definition cameras wouldn't pick up the flaws or the tape that make us human. As face tracking technology emerged, one common type of edit is putting an actress's face on a more muscular body double, like say after a long weekend of partying and looking bloated for the morning shoot. The Curious Case of Benjamin Button came out in 2008, and for the five of you who haven't seen it yet, it's about a man who was born at 80 and ages backwards. To make Brad Pitt look 80 required serious computational horsepower which wasn't available yet in 2004, when they did their first initial test. To achieve this, however, they took Brad Pitt's normal face and created a maquette of it at different ages from 80 downwards. From there, they used 28 cameras on what's called a Merva Contour Capture Rig and got his facial animations which were then lifted onto a variety of smaller, slimmer actors for the first 52 minutes of the film. Then Brad takes over with makeup, wearing less and less as he gets younger throughout the film. I brought up this example because A, the director David Fincher didn't shy away from difficult CGI shots like Benjamin being naked in the bathtub, with each shot costing from 500 to 2500 and with a total of 300 or so shots, it was a very big part of the budget even back then. And B, this movie came out in 2008, that's more than a decade ago and the CGI was more than passable even then. What the visual effects crew lacked in computational power, they made up for in meticulous hand-drawn CGI. The only difference now is that the technology has drastically improved and the computer can fill in more of the fine details itself without needing a world-class compositor. You see, once you've placed another man's face onto a body double, a compositing artist has to make sure that skin tones, color highlights and shadows all match, something that can take up to 3 days for a 2 or 3 second clip from start to render. The fact is, the majority if not all of the A-listers of Hollywood have beauty work done in post-production, usually by the producer's request. It's only recently that producers have become emboldened by the power of high-end VFX software, going so far as to change an entire face or take 25 years off. But in the past decade, a lot of the beauty retouching was incredibly subtle, like reducing a wrinkle here or a fold there. The work was so secretive that only the Brad Pitts of the world knew about it and only the highest level executives would pay off on it, but nowadays you can do it too, to the tune of 5000 a year for the entry level software. Meet the Flame Suite. Developed by Autodesk around 1995, you can pretty much edit your videos any way you want it to. At launch, this software cost $450,000 and came with its own workstation that could run it, so you can tell it's about as exclusive as it gets. It has more and less expensive versions for different markets, but Flame is the gold standard in compositing software for visual effects, with its most notable usage being in face tracking avatar. But we're not concerned about that, we're after beauty retouching here. Imagine photo retouching in Photoshop. That's one frame of a much larger puzzle. The edits you make to a photo, the blemishes you remove and the wrinkles you smoothen are recorded by the computer and applied to every similar frame in a moving video. This process of artificial intelligence greatly speeds up the process, something the Benjamin Button crew didn't have in 2008. 
It's not the type of software you'd see on Twitch livestream fail compilations, but it's a type of high-end retouching that's so subtle and so secretive you wouldn't even believe it existed without the behind-the-scenes footage. The simplest, most relatable way to explain how beauty visual effects works and flame itself works is by looking at your Snapchat filters. I remember when it first came out, face tracking was clunky and often lost you if you turned your face too much, but now it's an entirely different beast. Now imagine you're on set wearing a tracking mask to create a full 3D sculpture of your face. How much more accurate would that be? The filters you put on your face in Snapchat videos work on the same principle the Flame software uses. It creates a map of specific features on your face. The more points, the harder the computer works. The only difference is, you can edit specific features of the face model, like removing a blemish on point XYZ, which moves relative to the other points, which themselves move relative to your face. So it's being masked out in real time. I could liquefy and remold the entirety of the face by moving a few points on my 3D map. What's even crazier with software that costs more than a house, it algorithmically adjusts itself with the video's lighting, color tone and even grain. Something a compositor would have to do by hand previously. To me, that's absolutely nuts. But more often than not, simply smoothening your skin isn't enough to remove wrinkles with a natural look. So instead, editors will transplant features from a younger actor or actress onto the target, leading me to a de-aging masterpiece, The Irishman. Industrial Light and Magic, the VFX company for the movie, said, This was a movie about conversations and we needed a new system because the actors wanted to be themselves. As a result, bulky face markers and distracting green screens weren't used and over 1,750 de-aging shots were taken and digitally altered with custom-made software called Flux for the two and a half hour runtime. That's a $200 million budget with the majority of it spent here. Where conventional de-aging VFX works by sculpting a model of the actor's face first and building it from the ground up, this non-intrusive method meticulously observes how light ages and de-ages a face, adding and removing wrinkles. The biggest breakthrough, however, came from the custom-made camera rig, using dual infrared cameras which are invisible to the main camera and add no shadows, nor do they require any light. So the computer's still tracking face data, but making a mask in real time with invisible infrared. So the acting is done with minimal takes and is as authentic as possible. The VFX company then builds a new face to put on them from the actor's younger photos. At that point, if you can de-age the face, editing the neck, the chin, and the hands is a walk in the park. The real challenge in Hollywood de-aging a face by 20 odd years or so is that removing wrinkles removes subtle aspects of body language. A younger face has to act younger, down to how facial expressions are enunciated, how they carry themselves and their projection. In this video, a channel called iFake managed to de-age De Niro using free software called Deep Fake Lab. I can't show you the video for copyright, but if you watch it yourself, you'll see they did a solid job, but with most amateur edits, it overdoes the editing rather than underdoing it. It's a concept I talk about all the time on Instagram vs reality. Take a look at the eye reflections, they're doll-like. That $200 million budget is the difference between an 8 out of 10 job and a 10 out of 10 job. Now, before I finish up, I mentioned Deep Fake Lab, and the software is about as nutty as it sounds. If there's enough demand in the comments, I'll go more in depth into how the Flame software works, VFX, and deepfakes. But for now, subscribe to the channel to catch part 2 of this real-time video editing special. As always, if you have any questions, catch me over at my Instagram, at Shafi, where I post all sorts of side VFX projects and answer your DMs.